Hello, you're listening to the OmniTalk Fast Five, brought to you in partnership with Microsoft, the A&M Consumer and Retail Group, Takeoff, Sezzle, and Silk. All right, headline number five, smart cart maker Vive last week raised $6.7 million in their latest round of funding. According to TechCrunch, Vive plans to use the newfound cash in two ways. One, by improving their existing full shopping smart cart model and also investing in a new plug and play device that can be clipped onto the existing shopping carts to turn them into smart carts. Uh, Patricia, let's go to you first. What do you make, if anything, of the ever so slightly announced pivot to turn any cart into a smart cart? Um, so I think the jury's out for me on this one in terms of will it work um, and how much value would it bring to, you know, the retailer that's bringing those smart carts. Um, I was thinking about it from, you know, a couple of different angles. Um, will it bring more traffic? Will it increase, you know, your overall basket? Mm -hmm. And will it create more loyalty? And I think, you know, the only area where I think it adds significant value it's in the loyalty space because I think if you see what they're saying you can um I believe that if you're shopping over and over in that same store yep. it's storing your data it's storing your preferences and it's giving you advice on new products on new things that are coming up so it's allowing you to create a more sticky experience um with that with, with that you know with that retailer with that said i'm a little curious as to which segment it's going to appeal to okay right so in my case i mean i i like the technology but i'd rather spend the least amount of time in a, in a grocery store right and so this is not necessarily as appealing to me as much as it has kind of all the you know it, it sounds cool but i'm not sure it's actually as sticky as it looks. I don't know, Chad, if you had any thoughts on that one. Um, yeah, I, I probably would think about it a little bit differently from um, the standpoint of, um, I, yeah, so I, I love uh, innovation. I think consumers love innovation, i.e. gets the most traction when it has a touch of the familiar in the newness, mm -hmm. right? And so, I've stood and watched people try to figure out Amazon Go, right? And whether it's at an airport, Hudson News, or a grocery, right? Like it's often kind of a difficult leap for people and they get like stymied into walking away. Um, and so I, I think it's a little more intuitive in terms of like, comfort familiarity with the existing shopping process today you don't have mm -hmm. to engage with the screen right mm -hmm. um but you know use it for your essentially you know kind of just walk out type capabilities right so i i like this for a few reasons there's there's that um i i would assume it's less capital intensive than going you know full just walk out store retrofit probably right. even yep. full smart cart uh, yeah, options always the place like, these guys make, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Like, like caper dark dash mm -hmm. cart, like, you know, cheaper than that. Right. Um, and you know, I, I love, you know, I'll, I'll go back and, and steal your wonderful point earlier, Chris, and a different topic, but like the, the retail media networks that, you know, kind of this brings to the screen and personalization and all that, like, that's super interesting to me as well. It seems like they've also solved some of the operational issues of earlier carts with, Mm -hmm. small, you know, the baskets were too small. You couldn't take them out in the parking lot because of weather. They solved a bunch of those things. So I actually, actually kind of like this as a good intermediate step toward, you know, this uh, more frictionless experience that we, I think, you know, we all believe is, is coming and, and going to get here. Mm -hmm. Well, Chad, you have uh, family experience in the, in the shopping cart industry. Did you get any, tell the listeners a little bit about your experience and did you get any insight from, uh, Papa Lusk? Yeah. Uh, little known Lusk trivia. So my, my father, uh, Mr. Chuck Lusk himself, the man, the myth, the legend, uh, used to be in the shopping cart business. Uh, he was, CFO for the company that developed and pioneered the plastic shopping cart. Wow. Um, so there, there you go. Yeah. Uh, I'm, I'm sure he did not see this technology coming back in the day. Um, 
un- unfortunately with the, uh, with the West coast trip, I did not have an opportunity to check in with him beforehand to get his, uh, to get his hot take. This um, but we'll a, be, a, yeah, a great Thanksgiving topic. Exactly yeah. right. Exactly Although I would right. bet the smart cart definitely passed his like purview at some point because this idea is not new. Like right. it's been in the works since like 1980s. I can remember seeing like videos for that people have put around on YouTube around yeah. this concept. But I don't know. I I mean, I think the pivot's smart, mm-hmm. you know, and I think ultimately I mean, it makes like Chad, you mentioned it, but it makes one. It makes the idea more testable for retailers because you don't have to spend a god awful amount on the actual cart itself. Right which may not hold up to wear and tear given the elements and people beating the hell out of it and all that kind of stuff. Yes. So I think just to get it into market, it makes sense. But the other point I would make, and I would say this because I actually got asked this question while I was presenting at a silk event in Boston this week. I got asked of like how I would still view this, this area of experimentation. And I still said, I wouldn't be rushing to invest here, mm-hmm. at least not right away. And what I said to them is I'd actually be looking, if I was a grocer, I'd be looking at how Schnooks is going about this. Yeah. Schnooks is taking the right model for the average grocer to get the benefit of computer vision Mm -hmm. and particularly operationally. They're going with robotics, computer vision on the robots first. Mm -hmm. That way you get the benefits of better inventory, better pricing, get your feet wet with it, understand what it means for your operational dynamics of running a store day in and day out. Right. Then and only then do you start investing in this. Mm -hmm. Like this is the next step in my mind. Um, And so that's the approach I think you have to take because ultimately if you don't, you're asking, it goes back to what Chad said before in the CBG conversation with PNG. You're asking to c- consumers to adopt something to prove it out, which that is never the right approach. You should go with what you can do operationally on your own first and foremost. And still, the other point I bring up last is I don't know why this is still better than cameras in the ceiling in the long run. Yeah. Enabling the shopping experience that we all want as the cost for that come down. Yeah. And people understand how it works. And it doesn't require like an actual device. Like you can do cameras in the ceiling right. too are able to facilitate the shopping trip that Patricia's talking about where I just want to run in and grab right. a couple things versus like having to grab a cart and go through the store as that extra mechanism. I do like the clip in though. Like yeah. now that I'm pel- now that clip I'm, on now that I'm Peloton. Yeah, all the time i right. know what clip on right. clip in means yeah like i mean yeah, yeah you gotta you, ties are clip-ons yeah you know? it can be the a thing fun that experiment. closes your chips those but are clip-ons your, your point about though like how you're getting your product set ready and your training computer vision like that whole part of it is a huge investment that isn't just a clip on to the shopping cart right away yeah. like you've got to be making those investments and you, early on. and you talk to the people that really understand this that are on the forefront of computer vision experimentation the one thing they'll say is like we had no idea how much data is even coming our way totally. you have to figure that out first yes. before you actually ask the consumer to like start making all these big changes yes but anyway.